Well, hello everyone. This is Travis Heiss with the Association of Entrepreneurial Attorneys, and uh, we appreciate your time and, and thank you for spending some time with us today. We, we have a very exciting topic uh, that, in my mind, uh, it's about finances, and, and we're with Aiden Weinrib today. Uh, Aiden is a uh, she is not an accountant. She wanted me to make sure that that was very clear, um, but she has advised hundreds of businesses on their finances and best practices and you know every aspect of you know standard bookkeeping to you know standard financial reporting so i'm excited to have her on today to talk about how attorneys can leverage the bench product and just in not only the bench product but also the you know the best practices when it comes to bookkeeping and finances and how that can really uh, benefit a firm um, for those of you who are joining us today, and if you have questions, we would uh, encourage you to ask them. So please feel free to type them into the Q&A, and I will monitor that uh, or the chat. And I, if the time is right, I will interrupt uh, Aiden, and we will uh, answer your question. If we don't, we'll get back to you uh, shortly, right after the webinar and or in the Q&A. Um, but again, we appreciate your time. And Aiden, thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm going to let you kind of take it from here and, and tell us what we're going to learn today. And um, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited to be here as well and, and really glad to be able to talk a little bit more um, about the finance side of things for law firms because I know that this is often something that isn't necessarily super, super top of mind um, and really want to make sure that the listeners here and uh, the folks that are a part of the community at AEA can feel a little bit more confident about what their finances can mean to their business and how they can start to use those to really run the business that they want to um, and reach some of their goals. And as we say in the title here, making bookkeeping something that is a tool uh, rather than a burden because I, I don't usually see people who are the most jazzed about bookkeeping. So maybe we can start to change that a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I, and it's, it's one of those things that, again, we were, we were talking prior to re, um, starting the webinar, it, most attorneys literally have very little financial reporting at all. And just having the basic information that you guys provide can make change the, their whole business, in my opinion. And, you know, I know you're going to talk about a few of those things today, but uh, again, thanks. We're excited. Yeah, awesome. Um, and yeah, just a, a little bit of background. So I've been working here at Bench um, and work with, as Travis mentioned, um, hundreds of small business owners here, um, certainly quite a few entrepreneurial attorneys. Um, and we work with a lot of solo practices here. So excited to get a little bit specific in some of the examples that we can give um, and make sure that some of the folks here who are listening will be able to come away with some really actionable items and feeling a little bit more of a sense of control over this side of finance. So that's kind of what the goal is here today. And definitely, as Travis mentioned, um, for those of you who are listening to us live, please feel free to, to shout out with questions that you have or, or things that are coming up for you as you are listening to us talk. We really want to make sure that this is as applicable and actionable as possible. Um, I am not an accountant, so I may only be able to be so specific with the advice that I give you and we'll let you know if you should be, be talking to somebody who's got some more expertise. Um, and we'll kind of go into some of those details. So that might uh, be a good segue actually into a little bit of what our agenda is. So I wanna make sure that people have a, a bit more of a clear understanding of what is bookkeeping and the fact that it actually is different from accounting. That's not something that everybody knows. And um, I know how important language is to you guys in the law profession. So we'll make sure to be pretty clear about that and just give you some context on where bookkeeping fits into your financial picture. Uh, we wanna make sure that you have some sense of the financial reports that are gonna be able to help you discover the important uh, insights about your business uh, and help guide impactful decisions for your practice. Uh, something as important as hiring, better understanding your budget and what you're spending on. We'll give some clarity there. And of course, we want to make sure that you're able to focus on those really impactful uh, revenue oriented decisions or things that are, are feeling like they're driving your business forward in a way that's helping you meet your business goals. So we're going to talk about how to make the more tedious admin side of things that are associated with bookkeeping. Um, something that you don't have to spend a ton of time focusing on in order to be able to reap the benefits of. So with that, why don't we dive in by starting off by talking a little bit about what bookkeeping actually is. 
So at Bench, we define bookkeeping as the process of recording daily transactions in a consistent way. Uh, and it's a key component to building a financially successful business. So one way to think about bookkeeping um, is that it is a, a bit of a transactional sort of administrative uh, task that, that's more concerned with the recording of financial transactions. Uh, so something that you're doing on a regular basis, getting those numbers. It's kind of an objective activity. Um, and then it's often the, the first step and the foundation for accounting. So a lot of times people will sort of conflate bookkeeping and accounting. Bookkeeping is a faction in, or not really a faction, but a part of accounting, um, but it's certainly not the whole picture. Um, in, in short, bookkeeping shows you your numbers. Um, accounting is what gives those numbers meaning. So think of accounting as more as the interpretation and analysis of financial data. That financial data is visible within the bookkeeping side of things. So to separate those two. And uh, it, maybe maybe we didn't do, I didn't do a very good job of actually introducing Bench and the services they provide, but maybe you could just do a real brief introduction so we don't, I. I should have done that in the intro, but I did not. So, I know. We, that makes a whole lot of sense. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned so much <laughs> Yeah, part of the reason why we're diving into the importance of bookkeeping here and how it differentiates um, from accounting is because at Bench, um, the logo that you see on these two lovely people's shirts here, we are a bookkeeping company. So, we are the largest bookkeeping company. Uh, in North America. We focus exclusively on helping US-based businesses um, when it comes to providing bookkeeping as a service. And we use our own proprietary software to be able to do that. Um, and the reason why we have that software is because we are able to create the interface for it and make it really entrepreneur focused um, and purpose built to allow entrepreneurs to easily access information from a more visual perspective rather than traditional bookkeeping softwares which are really built for accountants to be able to work we want to make sure that entrepreneurs have um, a really accessible intuitive way of being able to manage their financials so We've been around since about 2012. Um, we currently have about 7,500 clients that we work with, uh, and law firms are a really huge piece within that, uh, that we want to really lean into even more to, to help make your lives a lot easier. Because um, as we've talked about a couple of times so far, <laughs> bookkeeping and finance isn't usually top of mind. You got a lot of stuff on the go. Um, so that's why at Bench, we pair you with one individual who is dedicated to your business, who's able to do the administration side of things for you. So that way you can log in and access the financial data yourself at a really cost-effective price. Yeah, and when she says really cost-effective, it's very cost-effective. And that's what I think is really attractive about what you guys offer. And by the way, I've, I've sent a few people um, to your service so far to, in our very new relationship, and they've been very satisfied and the reporting uh, to alone, it's just, it has really helped them identify areas where they, you know, could make improvements and or even, you know, do hiring or maybe not hire. So, you know, I, I just want not to plug or not to, you know, oversell. It's just that it's the, it, what you guys provide is a high value product at a very good price. And I like that. So um, that's why, you know, we wanted to partner with you guys. Awesome. And I guess that's why we're here today. So I super appreciate that endorsement. Um, and definitely something we're excited to to be working with you guys and, and hopefully help out a, a, the listeners and, and members of the AEA community. Awesome. So now maybe we can get back to the presentation. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> with all of that being said, so the reason why we, we are bookkeeping as a service and uh, have our own software, I guess you can actually see a little glimpse if you're looking at the webinar here, you can see a glimpse of what the software looks like, how we've got things laid out all colorfully and with graphs. Um, so we are the ones who do that admin side of bookkeeping, um, which means we're doing all of the data imports and, and categorization and making sure that the numbers are appropriately assigned. Um, so that way you can look at that objective financial data uh, and then be able to use that to inform the accounting that you need to do for your business. Um, whether that is maybe something as um, sort of straightforward and, and mandatory as budgeting, 
uh, or applying for taxes is typically the reason why people tend to go uh, looking for bookkeeping is because their accountant and CPA told them to, um, or something as um, specific as really looking into hiring or potential potentially seeking funding. Um, so certainly we want to make sure we can go into some more detail about how to make informed decisions with bookkeeping as a foundation. Um, but certainly bookkeeping is making sure you have the numbers that you need to know to be able to make those important decisions. So uh, one thing that we usually talk about is uh, how essential bookkeeping is to the long-term success of every business. Um, Especially maybe if you're a newer business, uh, a lot of people may not start off understanding the importance of bookkeeping, but the longer you're in business, the, the more valuable you see at what it means to look back and reflect on what's happened to be able to really look forward as well. Um, so understanding kind of the progress of your business, where you want to go to, being able to set goals um, and really make measurements against that. Uh, that's something that we see, see a lot of people and making sure you have numbers really visible, shines a light on what's working, what isn't so productive. Um, it's just so much easier to be able to find these pieces of data because um, otherwise you're, you're basically just guessing. So with that being said, maybe we can dive into um, some more detail about what it means to, to make informed decisions and what, what those decisions might be. Uh, so I know that for, I'm sure the people who are listening here and the members of the AEA community and, and most entrepreneurs, there's a really distinct reason um, why people go into business with themselves and why they become entrepreneurs. So I know that making informed decisions really, really matters. Um, and now that you sort of run your own business or maybe if you're a member of a smaller practice, um, there has become a lot, uh, a lot of change in the way that you might be sort of making a living. It's not just making a living by being in law. Um, now you actually have a business that you're a part of. And I know that there's sort of a lot at a large law firm um, that may be able to kind of fall into the background. You can just focus on running your practice and doing the work itself. Being a part of a smaller law practice or being an entrepreneur yourself, it's not just about the work, it's about making the business function itself. Um, and I hear so many solo practices telling me um, that there were aspects of running a business that completely surprised them. They had no idea that there were certain things they didn't know they didn't know. Um, so even if you're profitable, there's a lot of decisions to make um, and admin logistics to take care of. So I think scaling an operation is often um, one of the, the key pieces and that a lot of people come to us trying to be able to do better. A lot of people are in a place of growth when they start looking towards bookkeeping to be able to start to understand what are the areas of growth that they can lean into, how are they spending, how can they spend smarter, uh, and what the first step is going to be. So, hey, Aiden, I have a great question um, from Todd who asks, uh, if you don't mind, how is this different from using QuickBooks and perhaps a QuickBooks certified bookkeeper? Yeah, absolutely. It really comes down to what you're getting from that QuickBooks certified bookkeeper. Um, a lot of the time, uh, if you're using QuickBooks on your own, that's obviously a DIY type of investment. If you're using QuickBooks with a certified bookkeeper, it really depends on what kind of service level you're getting from that bookkeeper. Um, so are you able to access your financials on a regular basis? How often are you receiving data from that person? How often are they going to be doing the work for you? How much is it costing you? Um, how much insight do you get? Uh, will a lot of the time I see people who are working with bookkeepers and able to sort of set it and forget it, be able to work with somebody who is sort of hands off so that they can run their business, they don't need to worry about things, um, and they don't wanna see it or think about it again until tax time. So sometimes that's a really cost-effective option because you're not really getting uh, much insight on a regular basis, um, or you've just trusted somebody else to be able to do it. Um, so that side of things, I, I can work for a short period of time, but especially if you wanna be able to really understand the ins and outs of your business and what's working and, and maximize 
your efforts and understand where to, to work with. Um, that sort of cost effective option of hiring somebody but forgetting about it isn't always super effective. Um, a lot of the time a QuickBooks plus a QuickBooks certified pro can get really, really expensive. Um, so that may be where Bench is a little bit different in that we're super cost effective, but at the same time, we are doing it for you um, and essentially trying to make it as accessible and easy to understand as possible. I could probably speak a little bit more specifically if I knew some more detail about the relationship that you have with that person, what kind of price you're getting, what kind of interaction you get, how much you trust them. Um, but it, it really, really varies on a person to person basis. And I think that might be one thing that is also uh, different about Bench is that you really, you know exactly what to expect because it's not just a random individual in your town. Um, we, we serve a lot of folks and we focus a lot on making sure that each individual that's working with us has uh, a consistent understanding of what to expect on a regular basis. So no surprises. <laughs> That's uh, thank you for taking the time. And and so if you know, if that didn't answer your question, I'm sure that you can reach out to Aiden or anyone else on the team uh, after this webinar, and they'd be happy to um, you know give you more detail and ask you some more specific questions to address your specific needs. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely want to be able to get as specific as we can if we're not able to address your question in a ton of detail directly, um, but also happy to describe a little bit more. Um, I'm going to show you a bit more about the, the software coming up and can give you a bit more uh, of an understanding about sort of what goes into the onboarding process, because if it's something you're curious about, it's definitely worth sort of testing to see how it compares to be able to really experience it yourself rather than me sort of talking about it without being able to give you a ton of visuals. We want to make sure that you can get something hands-on and, and make an informed decision. All right. So perfect. I'd uh, be just throwing you off your, your, your note schedule, but um, sorry, but no, thanks for answering that question. I'm happy to go off the note schedule. It's uh, <laughs> totally fine. If we can talk about things when it's relevant to folks, I love that. That's great. Um, but I guess one thing that's worth mentioning as well is uh, when it comes to what you're getting from bookkeeping in general, um, the most common reports you're going to be looking at are a income statement and a balance sheet. Um, so those are terms you might be really familiar with. Um, if you're not super familiar with the purpose of those, that is pretty common for a lot of folks that we talk to. Your income statement is sort of your source of truth for what's going on in the business as far as the money coming in and the money going out. So you're able to see exactly what revenue you're earning. Uh, if you'd like, you can always customize a bit more to understand a bit more specifics of where that revenue is coming from. Uh, you'll be able to see your expenses. Those are going to be broken out into specific spending categories, where you'll also be able to see those transactions within the spending categories. Um, and then, of course, you see your net profit, which is your bottom line. Uh, when it comes to understanding your income statement, that's going to be your source of truth for your budget, understanding what you're spending on, what you're making money on, and then be able to sort of move items around strategically if necessary. Um, so especially if you are not looking at this type of information yet, your income statement is really the starting point, starting to learn how to read it, understand what you are really, what's going on financially for you is gonna be really, really important. Uh, when it comes to taxes, um, your income statement is going to be necessary no matter what your business structure is. Uh, your balance sheet is going to be vital if you're anything other than a sole proprietorship. So your balance sheet essentially will, will show you the overall value of your business, really what's going on. You're going to have a breakdown of your assets. So that's going to be things like your bank accounts, typically. Um, if you have... Um, any sort of larger computer or something along those lines, those may fall into that category as well. Uh, liabilities, so those are going to be things like your credit cards. If you have a loan out for the business, you'll see those laid out there. Uh, and then your equity side of things. So if you're taking, if you're paying yourself directly from the business rather than through payroll, you're going to see how much you're paying yourself that way in the equity side of things. 
Um, if you've got a partnership, um, you'll see kind of the breakdown on each partner side of things. Uh, and then overall, this is going to tell you the story of the financial health of your business. Um, when you're adding up your assets, liabilities, and equity, do you have a positive dollar amount? Do you have a negative dollar amount? This is going to help you understand overall um, how profitable you are besides just the net profit, your bottom line. Um, so that one is often a little bit trickier to, to start to wrap your head around if it's not something that you've read before. Um, that's typically something that um, is a little bit more ambiguous. It's less, this is what you spent on which date and how much. Um, so definitely recommend getting familiar with that as a starting point and, and feeling like you can get a little bit more comfortable with it over time. So the income statement and balance sheet are two things that you get on a monthly basis with Bench. Um, but of course, understanding key cash flow insights on a daily basis is something that's really important to a lot of our clients, especially if you're trying to make a decision on the fly. You don't always want to have to look back to what happened in July if you're trying to make a decision right now or in the next coming weeks. Um, so in addition to those monthly tax ready reports, uh, there is also something that we call Pulse, which allows you to see transactions that have happened um, on a daily basis. You can log in every day and see all of the transactions from within your accounts. There is a sort of um, balance update. So if you've got bank accounts, credit cards, PayPal, things with different institutions, within Bench you can see the balances for all of those accounts in one place on a regular basis. So you can sign in and see exactly how much cash is on hand at the moment, um, as well as this really high level week over week cash flow summary to show you how much is going in, how much is going out, be able to help you keep a radar on that. So that way you're more comfortable with what's spending on a regular basis, rather than just consistently looking backwards to understand what has happened. So a lot of different elements going in here um, to really be able to utilize to understand what's happening in your business financially and how to move forward with that. Um, but I do want to kind of ground this in the, the kinds of examples that we hear people use on a regular basis and where did knowing this information actually make a change. And one thing Travis and I were talking about is often that Hiring is something that becomes really, really major. How, how much money do you have? Can you afford to hire someone? You know that you're, you're clearly running a ton of things on the go. You know how much it would be useful to be able to have somebody there to, to support you. But are you able to actually make a decision on how much you can afford to pay somebody and, and, and how often or, or what that would look like? having records over time to see how much cash you have on hand, how much um, not just is sitting in your bank account, but what you're spending overall. Is there anything that you can cut back on? How much do you need to be able to really hire someone and think through that logically? And then make sure that you have that cash in the account to be able to pay them um, as needed. So that's, this is, yeah, that's a big one too. It's like, I can't tell you every attorneys I advise it, it personally. And that, you know, they often ask, you know, can I afford to, you know, hire someone? And yeah, I say, I don't know. Can you, it's like, well, let's take a look at your finances. And most people have no idea exactly what they're supposed to be looking at. And then, you know, beyond that, just even now, but it's like projecting, you know, your possible cash flow in the, over the next three to six months so that you could not only hire them now, but can you afford them? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, throughout the, you know, the next three to six months and hopefully the year or, or even longer. But it's it's so key that attorneys understand exactly, you know, what they're spending, where their ROI is coming from. Um, you know, just, and, that's, and I know a lot of that is a little bit beyond what we're talking about today, but just having some of the data that you guys provide allows, you know, them to do analysis elsewhere that can be so key, so key to making decisions in their business. And and this is the one area where most, not only attorneys, but small businesses fail, is managing their finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's something that is sometimes overwhelming to look at on a regular basis, but the more you look at it, the more questions you ask about what's going on here, what's going on there, the more comfortable you are with it, the, the more you know when it comes to those key decisions that you need to make. So hiring is obviously a really, really big one. 
um, but maybe it's something um, a little bit smaller, like starting to outsource to a virtual assistant. How much are you paying them on a regular basis if you're, you're hiring a virtual assistant to answer your phone calls? That's something I see a ton with law firms where they'll start with a virtual assistant before they move on to um, some other type of administrator within the business that takes on a little bit more. Um, or maybe you are trying to get a better sense of how effective your marketing is. Are you buying Facebook ads? How much are you actually spending on those Facebook ads? What does that look like over time? Um, and did spending more actually equal more when it comes to your revenue or your clients and, and how you're working on that side of things? Um, I know that marketing spend is often something that can be really overwhelming um, and it's something we get a lot of people wanting to understand more about is exactly how effective is their marketing spend. Um, so that's one thing that I see people talking about a lot. Now, I hope that we've covered some ground here. I wonder if there are any questions from some of the folks who are listening right now. Um, if there are things that they're kind of curious about wanting to make adjustments to or things that they might be interested in spending on that maybe we could speak to a little bit more specifically. I'm just, I'm going with some things that I hear coming up pretty frequently um, from a lot of the, the solo practices and, and smaller firms that we talk to. So I hope that those were some relevant examples. I have a couple of questions I think that may be, you know, um, on the minds at least of people that I know that I talk to. How deep do you guys go with the bookkeeping? You know, I mean, and how deep does the reporting go? Can you give us some general idea of exactly what they could expect? I mean, do you do like thorough cash flow or financial projections or, you know, ROI um, reporting or, you know, how, what, what level of reporting do you guys provide? Yeah, we're mostly reporting on uh, the, the tax readiness aspect um, in a bit more of a visual way. So, you know what, actually, I can... Um, move forward in some of these slides to give some more clear pictures here. Uh, so when it comes to your, your income statement and your balance sheet, those are going to be the two core reports that we're providing for you. Um, so really being able to understand kind of what's going on as it's happening. Um, when it comes to the projections, that's more on the accounting side of things. Bench will focus on that bookkeeping side of things. Um, so we're doing the reporting on the numbers that have happened. And we do that on a, what we call a modified cash basis. So that's basically the transactions as they're occurring with some adjustments as needed. Um, if there is some type of more um, accrual basis side of things. Um, that particularly factors in when it comes to trust account uh, for law firms. So when it comes to your trust management and the reporting you need for your trust account. Um, that's something that you would get from a, a software, maybe like Clio or something along those lines. They'll be able to manage your trust reporting. We're managing the business's bank accounts. So we'll recognize your revenue when it hits your business's bank account uh, and then be able to keep the, the balance within your trust account as a liability, for example. Um, so you'll see the the actions that have happened and then in the visual that we have up on the screen right now you'll see how we break this down in a much more visual representation um, where you'll be able to get summaries of that income statement um, with visuals on your top 10 expenses in a sort of percentage format to be able to really not just see these are the numbers but try to be able to decipher a little bit more about what those actually mean uh, and then there was that cash management dashboard that I mentioned earlier. So this is not just looking back at the past, but being able to see what's happening as it's happening. So on the recent transaction side of things, on the right-hand side, you're seeing all of the ins and outs that are happening. So you can really be able to monitor this closely. Um, sometimes it can be really helpful for, for keeping track of uh, if you have different subscriptions that are coming out of different accounts, you don't need to have multiple tabs open to be able to see what's going on there. Certainly, if payday is coming up, you do have employees, you want to make sure that you've got enough in the bank in the right account. You can take a look at all of your account balances and see what's going on here. And then again, there's this cash flow summary on the bottom left that really helps you visualize week over week what's coming in and what's going out. So maybe you had one week that was really high in expenses. You, you, you bought a, a, 
a ton of things or you uh, had payroll run that week or, or something along those lines compared to some other weeks. Um, this is really about understanding how the transactions in your business affect things on a really regular basis. It's not all green or not all red. Often different weeks will have a, a bit of a different flow to them. So this can help you get a better understanding of what might be causing those trends and help you start to think about whether there's any changes you want to make or just be mindful of what's coming up next. So that help kind of give you a little bit more context there for, for the question, Travis. It does. Thank you. Yeah. And it, it definitely, and then how do you guys, how, it, how would you work with say an accounting firm that um, was providing that second level of reporting? Yeah. So we work really closely with a lot of our clients, uh, CPAs or financial advisors. Um, maybe it's a relationship that's more along the lines of a business coach that they're working with, or maybe it's somebody who really is their accountant when it comes to tax time. Uh, so we have the ability to set logins as many times over as our, our clients might need. A lot of our clients will have uh, a login for their CPA to be able to directly access the bench account. Uh, and communication is unlimited with our team. So if you want to make sure that your CPA can just communicate with us directly, so that way you don't have to worry about being a middleman, downloading information and sending it over, we'd love to be able to communicate directly with your CPA and make sure any adjustments they have, we can implement for you. Um, and that they'll be able to download information directly. Um, so that's pretty much the, the way that things happen when it comes to tax time. We talk to a lot of our CPAs starting around, sometimes as early as September, if you are super on the ball and you want to say, this is, it's September now, I want to make sure I'm super prepared when it comes to April. That's when we, we start to have conversations with CPAs. They definitely pick up the closer we get to March and April. Um, but at any point in time, we want to make sure that you have the tools that you need to make filing as smooth as possible. Uh, and we put together what we call a year end financial package. So this is going to be a really in depth Excel document that's going to show everything that's happened throughout the year. So some of our clients will come to us partway through the year um, and then have us go back and do some historic work for them. Some clients will be with us for a full year where we'll be able to have that info. If you've already had some type of accounting software partway through the year that you really, really rely on, um, maybe it's the situation where you currently have a, a QuickBooks Pro who's doing your, your books and you trust those numbers, um, but you want a solution that's maybe a bit more interactive, a bit more cost effective, and you want to switch to Bench. Um, in that case, we'd sort of match up the closing balances that you had from your previous books to what we have and move forward from there. So lots of different options. People come to us from a ton of different places, but no matter what time of the year you're coming to us, we do make sure that you have this really thorough document to be able to make sure that you can send that to your CPA. They can really easily look for the numbers that they need to know when it comes to filling out the forms for your taxes uh, and keep that as smooth and with as little of the friction that we can so that way you can just stress way less because we know it's nobody's favorite time of year we can help you take on some of that wherever we can so that's the tax side of things but certainly like i mentioned before lots of financial coaches um, that are working with our clients will interact with the financials maybe they want to have um, some type of customization in the chart of accounts. So those categories that are set up on the income statement, we can work with your financial coach or directly with you to set up some customization there if you wanna have transactions tagged really specifically. Um, or if you just wanna have that person be able to log into your account during your appointments with them so that way they can advise you on what's happened here, um, then certainly that's something that we see a lot of the time as well. So additional logins can happen. And if you're looking for somebody to work with, we have a large network of people that we partner with that we'd be happy to refer if you want to make sure that you're working with somebody who is really comfortable um, with the way that we have our system set up and knows exactly what to expect when it comes to bench and how to interact with us really easily. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, that was a very, very thorough answer. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I got a little rambly there, but I hope that that was useful. No, um, well, definitely. Yeah, and I guess we can talk a little bit about the, the outsourcing, um, the admin side of things. We've talked a lot about sort of what it means to be able to have your numbers. 
Um, but I think having your numbers and doing them yourself is, is a really, really different thing. Um, I know a couple of people who, who felt like it was a bit of a revelation to not have to work on this administration side of thing themselves. I think a lot of the time when somebody is just starting with their new business, um, they take on every single aspect of the business themselves both to really make sure that they even know they have a business, have an understanding of what's going on. Maybe doing the numbers isn't something that's prioritized and they go through their first tax season needing to spend a couple of weeks doing what we call sort of catch up work um, and spending a lot of time and stress on that. Um, so I think that when it comes to the key things that people tend to outsource, especially in the law profession, I alluded earlier to um, virtual assistants. I think that's one of the things, answering the phones while you're trying to focus on one thing and feeling like you're just fragmented into a million different pieces. That's a really um, easy decision. I see a lot of solo practices make super, super early on. Maybe it's one of the first things that they even set up. Um, that ends up making a big difference. Um, and then of course, the financial administration side of things, instead of teaching yourself how to use a completely new software, um, like QuickBooks or Xero, um, the DIY side of things can often be helpful if you have very, very few transactions. Maybe it's just sort of taking transactions and snapping them into place. If you're only paying for the software, it's obviously super cost effective. But if you're not sure what you're looking at, if you're not sure what the right category for this meal expense was, like, does this actually count as a, as a meal for my business? Is it just something that's personal? Some of those sort of gray area matters. It really helps to be able to have a professional to turn to. So that's really where we see Bench coming into play for so many of the businesses that we serve is that they have the professional to do it for them um, and make it that much more approachable as well as interactive on a really regular basis. So the, the administrative side of the task is taken away while you're, be, you're able to get that insight. Now, I wonder of the people who are listening now, I'm so curious about how many people currently have their bookkeeping taken care of and are sort of looking for more insight into how they can leverage that how many people are doing the books themselves? How many people may have not really paid attention to this until now? And this is one of the, the ways that they're starting to educate themselves on, on how to get more involved with bookkeeping. Um, I'm super curious to, to know kind of where people fall within that. I wonder if anybody wants to kind of speak up and mention a bit about what they're personal perspective is on this, because I'd love to be able to speak a little bit more specifically to any of those camps. Um, but clearly there's a lot of different reasons why sort of people are, are coming to bookkeeping. People never really do bookkeeping for the sake of it. It's always a means to an end. Um, and there's often people at different stages in their entrepreneurial journey, different stages of their financial journey, um, and where outsourcing admin comes into play it really depends on where you're at there. Um, when it comes to bench, I think, and this is one thing that we've touched on a couple of times to give you some more grounding in what we mean when we say affordable, bench is starting at around $120 per month to have somebody do that work for you. A lot of the time, if you are maybe hiring your CPA, you want to get the accounting and the bookkeeping all in one package. They're probably going to have a little bit less time or charge a bit more for their time. Usually something in that side of things is going to um, be charging at minimum $300 to $400 a month. Um, so when it comes to outsourcing, there's a couple of different options, but you can think about sort of your priorities. How much time are you really looking to spend? Do you have to spare? How, what's your level of expertise? Do you really want to get somebody else to do this for you? The answer is usually yes to that. Um, then what are your options? How much time do you want to spend? How much insight do you want to get? Clearly, the more, the more hands-on and more you lean into the accounting side of things, that's where it tends to get more expensive. So usually 
clients with Bench are going to be turning to Bench to be able to have their basics really easily accessible or professional accessible, um, but they don't need it. Um, maybe they don't want a ton of handholding along the way unless they are working in tandem with somebody that they see maybe on a quarterly basis who can then help them get more insight uh, from what Bench is telling them quarterly or want to do that insight on an annual basis. How did this year compare to last year? What can we do next year to make sure that you are minimizing your tax burden as much as possible? Yeah, I, I, I wonder how many people on this webinar are actually using a bookkeeper currently or doing it themselves. And feel free to type it in the Q&A uh, or the chat um, if you're interested in sharing that with us. And, but I would, uh, I would have, I would guess that you know probably it's half and half. I know a lot, you know, a lot of our members you know are looking for help in this area, but a lot of them have trust issues um, mm -hmm. with with anybody you know, let alone uh, you know a, a larger company. So maybe you can address that to some degree. It's like you know, what, how do you overcome that um, that that obstacle when you're talking to to prospective clients? Yeah, it's interesting. I find that being a larger company is is something that I find is actually quite a big security blanket. We have a, a ton of security measures in place, um, both within our staffing and our internal team, who, by the way, are 100% based in Vancouver. Uh, a little bit ironic that we're in Canada serving US clients, but nonetheless, we're all based in Vancouver, one head office. There's a, a lot of security that goes into the way that we've built our system. Um, so I think that can be really vital to some people. Um, the fact that we're not necessarily their neighbor who knows about their finances. Um, it really depends on sort of what aspect you're, you're laying your value on there and, and what it is that you're trusting. Um, as well as the consistency that you get here. Um, certainly you've got a relationship with the bookkeeping team and you're able to rely on them and, and really be able to build a relationship with that individual. It's not just a mystery person in a mystery land. We are, are real humans in Vancouver who <laughs> sometimes get visits from clients if you're ever up north. Um, but So it's not just a random stranger. It's an actual person um, who's got a, a lot of the infrastructure of a large company that can really end up adding a lot of support to your business. Um, that being said, there are some people who love working with their neighbor and prefer that. If that's your preference, and, of an online solution like Bench is probably not the best option for you. Um, but if you really are looking for somebody that you know is going to be around for a while, one thing that comes up quite frequently with some people who come to Bench from a previous bookkeeper rather than a DIY solution, a lot of the time they come to us because their bookkeeper ghosted them or there was some serious inconsistencies in the way that communication was managed. Um, maybe that bookkeeper was using QuickBooks desktop instead of QuickBooks online. And even though they were paying that person to work for them, they had no idea what the work actually was or how often they were doing it and had no insight that they needed. Maybe they got emailed reports every once in a while, but they didn't really feel comfortable about being able to access it as um, conveniently as they would like to. Uh, or it was just sort of quarterly or annually really depends on sort of what you're placing value on. So I would go back to, to some of those questions that I mentioned before. What is it that you, you think you need when it comes to the financial information? Where are you in your learning curve? How often do you want to see info? How often do you want to talk? How much do you want to pay? And what do you really want to get out of it? And sort of thinking those questions through can really help you decide what the right option is for you. Um, and I think Bench definitely stands out in being accessible, affordable, and legible for a lot of the business owners. That's the reason why they want to go with Bench. So that, that, that answered my question. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. And I'm not sure if we got anybody who let us know sort of what the, the purpose that, or how they're doing their bookkeeping now. Um, but again, we did not, we did not. So if, uh, again, if we ask the question, again, if anybody wants to, to uh, chime in on how they're doing their handling their current bookkeeping, um, situation, please feel free. We'd love to get some, uh, input from people, but again, no, you know, don't be shy. We're not going to share this information with anybody else. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I can go into a little bit more detail about sort of how bench works. Um, especially when it comes to that trust question that you raised, Travis, 
Um, so I mentioned security before, we are a cloud-based software. So the way that things work is we have things encrypted, um, all of Bench is encrypted uh, with the same level of security as your online bank. Uh, so it's definitely very tightly sealed within Bench. When it comes to who's actually doing that work, I mentioned you have that dedicated individual. And that person works within a very small team. Part of the reason why you have one person that's dedicated to your account is to limit the number of people who are working with your accounts, but they do work within a team so that way things get peer reviewed, uh, which means that there are multiple eyes looking over your financials on a regular basis for quality assurance. Uh, then the way that we're getting information, we try to automate as much as possible. So with some more traditional bookkeeping systems maybe you have to manually send information to that bookkeeper um, or maybe they have things um, set up within quickbooks but those connections are breaking if you use capital one that is something that you may experience a little bit more than some other banks uh, the way that we get information is we automate it as much as we can um, so there is a tab within the bench account and uh, if you're looking at the webinar now we've got um, the screen sort of showing what a bench account looks like. Um, one of the tabs that you see on the left hand side there is to create automations for your banking and credit card institutions. So that way the banks will send us your information rather than having us log into your account to manually grab things. So it's um, a permission kind of screen there um, where the bank will send us your information automatically. We've got a couple of different connections depending on how you want to set things up. Um, so we can receive transactions as they occur, as well as the statements that are available on a monthly basis. And once we receive the documentation we need, your dedicated team is going to process those on the monthly basis to put your reports together for you. So again, that summary income statement and balance sheet. Uh, and then with that information, uh, they'll guarantee to have those reports ready for you within 15 business days. That's usually the maximum. So it really depends if maybe you have a meeting on the sixth of every month that you need your financials available for, just give your team a heads up and they can always make sure to make, have those reports available for you if you need them any sooner. Or maybe you've got a meeting with the bank, you wanna apply for a loan or, or something along those lines. We're really collaborative in making sure that the reporting is available to you when you need it. So the more info we have, the better when it comes to that. Uh, and once your reports are available, you're going to be able to see them here. There is a message board that you can use to communicate with your team directly, which is always super helpful. If you've got an iPhone, you can use that on your iPhone app. Uh, so that way the team can let you know when things are prepared for you, you'll get a notification. Sometimes there will be transactions we have questions about. So we'll send you a message letting you know that there are a couple of transactions we've put into a special category called the waiting category. And you can either comment on those or click on the category that you'd like to have them assigned to. So that way things are really, really smooth um, and as informative and communicative as possible. And then again, you've got that year end package uh, that makes it as smooth as possible at the end of the year. So that way it doesn't need to be your, your least favorite month. And again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A um, and Aiden uh, will address them. Um, but uh, if you don't, oh, you know, that means you're doing a very thorough job of, of uh, <laughs> explaining your services. So. Um, I have currently. had some questions about it in the past, so I'm sort of preempting some of the ones that typically come up which maybe is why we don't have a ton of questions, but yeah, trying to be as detailed as we can, because I know that there's a lot that goes into all of this and a lot to think about. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, I mean, really the, the value proposition here is that you guys provide a very high quality bookkeeping service at a extremely affordable price point, and you work well with, you play well with others. So, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of value in that in and of itself, you just being able to integrate with either, you know, different, technology or um, you know other firms or other you know professionals who need the information that you guys have so again I, you know it's, it's complicated as bookkeeping can be this you know is a very simple service in my mind that you know it should be taken advantage of because you know a lot of people I know are using their aunt or their cousin or somebody they know locally and it's not that that's a bad thing but I mean, far too often people trust 
with people they shouldn't trust. And I've, I've seen it happen time and time again, where they just get bad information or there's little common mistakes that happen that you know shouldn't happen and it uh, creates problems. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and Daniel missed the beginning. Daniel, he had a question. There will be a recording uh, sent out to everybody of the entire presentation, which has been you know great so far. So yes, uh, we will send that out. So sorry about that. Yeah, and I guess one thing we didn't mention at the beginning that I'm happy to mention is that for for those who are interested in um, exploring Bench, anybody who is listening to this webinar and who's a member of the AEA, um, you guys do get a discount off of Bench's services. We're, we're super excited to make sure that you, you get a discount. So you'll get 20% off of your first six months with Bench. Um, so depending on which package you fall within, depends on how much savings that really equals out to. So um, we'll make sure that you have a link to be able to take advantage of that discount. Or if you have been super jazzed and you're already just looking at bench.co and you clicked on the free trial button um, there, just make sure you mention that you heard about us through AEA. So that way the folks that you speak to are gonna be able to give you a discount because uh, we wanna make sure you, you can take advantage of that. Yeah, and thank you for that. That's very generous. And uh, again, that, that's, uh, you know, 20% off. That's a, that's a, it's incredible. I'm already on a very low price point, but uh, thank you for doing that. That we appreciate that. We just, oh, yeah. you know, sending that to our members. We're really excited to give you guys a discount. I'm very, very um, want to make sure that you guys can truly make the most of this. And, and we know how obviously budgeting is something we've been talking about a lot, how tight things can run. So the more savings and value we can add for you guys, the better. Um, and I do, I want to mention, I realized, um, especially when I was talking about how Bench works, I didn't mention our onboarding process. This is something that is, is really unique. We give you guys a free month of bookkeeping. Um, maybe if you're working with a, a local bookkeeper or a local option, sometimes they actually do the opposite. They have an onboarding fee because it can take a lot of time to kind of get you up to speed and, and understand your finances. We do the opposite to learn about your business really quickly and help you really understand what is going on with Bench and what to expect from an interaction standpoint. So um, a and lot more depth. I just had another question from Dan yeah. who said, if the service is online, is it US based? Any other country locations involved? And I know that you address this, but Daniel's had a few good questions here. So I just want yeah. to give you the opportunity to address that again, because I know there's always concern about working with that, you know, people yeah. out there. Yeah, sure thing. So we are located in Canada. That's where our head office is based. Technically, we are a US company. We actually started off in New York, but the founders were from Vancouver. So that's why we moved up here. We're based in Vancouver and 100% of our office is located here. We do not outsource anything. Um, so we really take a lot of pride um, in making sure that everything is under one roof from not only a security standpoint, but a level of service. We can really maintain quality of service by making sure we work really closely with everybody that we work with um, from a client perspective, as well as from an employee perspective um, and make sure that quality is kept a really close eye on by being all together here. Um, so that's something that's really important to us. Even though we do work with um, exclusively US-based clients, we did a little run in Canada. Uh, we weren't able to make it as cost effective for Canadians just because the tax requirements are very different in Canada than in the US um, but uh, yeah we were all located in Canada this is the short answer there okay oh, thank you sorry to make you go back to that again but thought it maybe <laughs> that's totally okay I'm happy to um, was that all the questions that we had there or were there any others uh, yeah, Daniel actually has another question. So it said, do you integrate with Cosmolex or other practice management softwares? When it comes to those integrations, typically we are not integrating with uh, the management softwares. It really depends on what info you're looking to have reflected in your financials. If you're looking to have maybe a bit more of a detailed breakdown on your top line that you're able to get from those management softwares and you want to see that reflected within Bench, talk to us about that. Usually what we'll do for things along those lines is more of a human integration. So setting up a read-only login for your bookkeeping team to be able to access additional reports. Um, that's often something that we do with, um, for example, and uh, the first example that's coming to mind is more on the e-commerce side of things. So it's something we do a lot with 
for example, Shopify. Um, so depends on the type of info you want to have reflected in your financials from that management software. That's probably something we'd be able to talk to you a little bit more detail about during that, that free trial that we do. Excellent. Thank you. Hopefully, Daniel, hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, thanks for asking questions, Daniel. <laughs> Happy uh, to try to get specific with that. Um, but I guess one thing I wasn't able to say with the free trial that I'll quickly touch on again. So the free month isn't actually a whole month that you have to work with us. It's us doing one of your most recent months. So we are in August right now, for example, we would do July's financials for you and we can complete those financials in less than 24 hours. So in some cases, we can do it as fast as 20 minutes and get them to you really, really quickly. Um, often it takes a little bit longer, but we really do wanna show you the value of the reporting system as soon as we can, um, and then walk you through those reports. Make sure that you have a clear understanding of how to interact with the bench software. Make sure that you can give us some input on the transaction recording side of things, so that way we understand what to expect moving forward. Uh, and then at the end of that, kind of phone call, we'll be able to confirm cost with you. Um, and one other thing about our cost is that it's guaranteed for the next full year. So um, with some local bookkeeping options, they may be charging you on an hourly basis or on a transaction basis. So you might not know exactly what to expect or how to budget that because it can fluctuate month to month or week to week, depending on how frequently you're working with that person. Um, so we guarantee your price point for the next full year up front. So that way you know exactly what you can count on, even if expenses start to go up and things really take off for you. Excellent. And we're about uh, nearing the end here. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please let us know. Uh, that would be fantastic. And I was just prompted to plug our regional event. We have in Indianapolis uh, coming up in September, uh, September 21st. So we hope we get a chance to, if you're interested, please go to our website and check that out. And do you have any uh, final thoughts or anything you want to leave us with? I know that you've got a great job of explaining the service and also the offer that the uh, is exclusive offer to our members and, and we appreciate that. But again, I'm going to leave you with the last few minutes here before we wrap up. And again, we will have this out and send it out to everybody who signed up and as a recording and we'll get that out to everyone tomorrow. Um, but we did, we appreciate everyone who joined us today. Yeah, absolutely. We, we are really trying to, um, make sure that we can help you get the answers that you're looking for as much as possible. So when it comes to trying to understand your financials, I'd love to know more about what stage you're at and what you're really thinking about at this point in time um, and be able to craft something for you that can be really, really relevant. Um, so feedback is super, super welcome. I'd love to know what you took out of what we've covered so far. And if there's anything you felt like you were kind of left hanging with, let me know and we can try to fill in those gaps for you. Um, if there are things that you wanna just start looking through yourself, we have a ton of resources on our blog. So that's bench.co slash blog. Um, if you even just search law in that, you're gonna find a couple of specific resources um, and some client stories there that can help you get a better sense of what bench might mean. But generally speaking, if you're trying to learn some best practices, it's a really, really great resource um, that you can turn to and, and learn a lot of details. Um, but we're definitely super excited to be a part of the community here and be able to help you get a, a lot of confidence in, in understanding your financials. So please let me know what you're thinking about so we can work on that together. Thank you. And how can they get in touch with you? Um, if you want to get in touch with uh, Bench in general, bench.co, if you want to get in touch with me specifically and reach out to me directly, you can feel free to email me at Aiden, A-I-D-A-N, at bench.co. Excellent. And we're just butting up against the hour here. So again, I want to thank you for your time. We really do appreciate it. And I'm uh, again, we're, we're going to be promoting your service quite heavily because I think it's one of those services that is underutilized and often overlooked and can provide a significant amount of value for uh, small law firms and mid-sized law firms to, you know, for that matter. So again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, and we appreciate those of you who hung out with us for the entire hour. Uh, we will see you in another couple of weeks, but we Again, thank you uh, to you and your team. I know we spent a lot of time getting ready for this, so and uh, it's not easy preparing for webinars. So thanks for <laughs> everything you guys have done.
Well, it's been really fun, Travis. Thanks so much for, for having us come talk and yeah, excited to keep the conversation with you and your members going. Thank you so much. And again, for those of you who are interested in more information on the AAA, you can go to the entrepreneurialattorneys.org website or just reach out to us uh, directly and we will uh, give you as much information as we want on bench as you want on bench or uh, some of our other partners. So again, thanks for your time today and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Bye guys.